We're looking at the Feb March 2016 Grade 12 examination paper 2 and this is a question on acids and bases. Okay, 7.1 define an acid in terms of Lowry Bronsted theory. We know that an acid is a proton donor. And remember, in acids and bases, when we refer to a proton, we are referring to the H plus ion or the H3O plus ion. Both mean the same thing. Going to the next question, carbonated water is an aqueous solution of carbonic acid H2CO3. H2CO3 ionizes in two steps when it dissolves in water. Write down the formula of the conjugate base of H2CO3. Now, H2CO3, if it has a conjugate base, that would mean that itself is an acid. So if it, it, so if it has a conjugate base, itself would be an acid. And we know that an acid is a proton donor. So after it has donated its proton, donates the proton, what does it become? And we can see that when it loses that proton, and the proton is the H plus ion, it's now HCO3 minus. So H2CO3 is the acid, and after donating the proton, it forms HCO3 minus. So HCO3 minus is called the conjugate base. Going to 7.2.2, write down a balance equation for the first step in the ionization of carbonic acid. So carbonic acid H2CO3, when it ionizes, that means it breaks up into its respective ions. So we know that it is made up of hydrogen ions, H+, and it is made up of the carbonate ion, which is CO3 2-. Now we need to check if this is balanced. So we have two hydrogens here on the left hand side. So that would give us two hydrogens on the right hand side as well. And we have one carbonate ion on either side. So to complete this, we would just show that the uh, carbonic acid ionizes to form two H plus ions aqueous plus CO3 two minus aqueous. And that is how you would get a mark for each of your ions and the third mark would be given for balancing. Going to 7.2.3, the pH of a carbonic acid solution at 25 degrees Celsius is 3.4. Calculate the hydroxide ion concentration in the solution. So they want us to find the hydroxide ion solution so they actually want the OH minus concentration. So to do this, we know we're going to use the given information that the pH is equal to 3.4. We look at our data sheet and we get the equation for pH. pH is equal to minus log concentration of H3O plus ions. So we have 3 of 3.4 is equal to minus log H3O plus ions. And when we put this into our calculator, we will be able to solve for H3O plus concentration. And that gives us an answer of 3.98 times 10 to the minus 4. These square brackets indicate concentration. So that would mean that 3.98 times 10 to the minus 4 mole per dm cubed is the SI unit for concentration. But if we go back to the question, we see that they actually wanted the hydroxide ion concentration. But we have found the H3O plus concentration. So going to the data sheet, we can see an equation where 25 degrees Celsius, the H3O plus concentration multiplied by the OH minus concentration is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And this equation is on the data sheet. So I'm going to substitute for the concentration of H3O plus, 3,98 times 10 to the minus 4. And we're now going to be able to solve for the concentration of OH minus. And that would give us OH minus concentration equals 2.51 
times 10 to the minus 11 mole per dm cubed. And that would be our final answer. Okay, going to 7.3, and this is the stoichiometric calculation part of the acid base section. So, X is a monoprotic acid. State the meaning of monoprotic. So, monoprotic means it has only one proton to donate. So, for example, it could have been an acid like HCl or HNO3 nitric acid. These are monoprotic acids, only one hydrogen to donate. And you would um, use your exam guideline document to give them the formal definition to get your full marks there. 7.3.2, a sample of acid X is titrated with a standard sodium hydroxide solution. So X reacts, so titration basically means it is reacted with a standard sodium hydroxide solution. So the formula for sodium hydroxide, we know sodium is in group one, so Na plus, and hydroxide ion is OH minus, so the formula is NaOH. And they do not give us the balance equation, but they ask us a few questions. They tell us the endpoint, uh, the volumes that reacted, and concentrations, and then they ask us for the concentration of acid X. So the first thing we always need to do is we need a balance equation. Now we know that when we have an acid plus a base, all hydroxides are bases, we would get a salt plus water. So we know that water is going to be one of our products in this reaction, and the salt would be a salt of Na. But we don't know what the acid is. So for example, if it was HCl, then we would have got NaCl out. And if it was HNO3, we would have got NaNO3 out. So the salt is NaX. And because of this information of it being monoprotic, we know that if we balance this equation, it would be one here, one acid, one mole acid to give us one mole of the salt. So that was a little bit tricky. Now going to the given information, we're going to list the given information. This is always the best way to start any calculation. List the given information so that you can see what information you have. At end point, it is found that 25 cm cubed of acid X so 25 cm cubed would be the volume of the acid, so we call that VA. It is neutralized by 27.5 cm cubed of sodium hydroxide. So the volume of the base that was used is 27,5 cm cubed. Of the sodium hydroxide solution of concentration 0,1. So they are giving us the concentration of the base which is 0, 0,1. They have not given us the concentration of the acid. And the next question says, calculate the concentration of acid X. Now, when we have a titration equation, sorry, when we have a titration question, then we can use our titration equation, which says that the number of moles acid over number of moles base is equal to CAVA, concentration of acid times volume of acid all over CBVB. Now when we are looking for the number of moles acid and the number of moles base, we do not have to actually work this out, but we can just use from the molar ratio. So that is in this particular equation. So when you're using this titration equation, then you can take Na and Nb from the molar ratio. But usually when we do stoichiometric calculations, we calculate the actual number of moles by using mass over molar mass. So for this equation specifically, you are allowed to take your molar ratio. So we can see from the molar ratio that one mole of X reacts with one mole of base. So one over one, the concentration of acid is an unknown. The volume of acid was 25 cm cubed. I'm going to convert to dm cubed, the SI unit, all over the concentration of the base, which is 0, 0,1, multiplied by the volume of the base, which is 27,5, and I'm converting to dm cubed, always convert to SI units. And we're going to put this into our calculator, and that would give us the concentration of the acid.
and we get an answer of 0, 0,11 mol per dm cubed. And that would be your final answer for the concentration of x. Going to the last question in this um, acid-base question, 7.3.3, the concentration of the H3O plus ions, so H3O plus concentration, is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Is X a weak acid or a strong acid? Explain by referring to your answer in 7.3.2. So in 7.3.2, we found that the acid concentration was 0, 0,11. Now we know that acids dissociate and produce H3O plus ions. So we have our acid concentration, which was 0, 0,11. And we have our H3O plus concentration, which is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. And we can see now that all of this did not dissociate. This is far less. The concentration of H3O plus is less than the concentration of the acid. And from the definition of strong and weak acids, we know that a strong acid is an acid which, which dissociates almost completely to form a high percentage of H3O plus ions. So if this was a strong acid, then that would mean that from this 0, 0,11, the concentration of H3O plus would have been almost 0, 0,11 as well. But it's not. It's far less. And that would mean it is a weak acid. I hope this has helped you guys. Don't forget to like and to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos. And so that you don't miss any videos. And share this with as many friends of yours as you can. So that more people can benef benefit from these lessons.